You're listening to Psychonauts, part of WMCO. And for the next little while, I'm your host, the man whose head is always in the clouds every time I light my barbecue, the man who constantly sees stars amongst a field of blackness whenever I use power tools, the man who believes in little green men, because on occasion, I've turned black and blue due to bruises. I'm James Manic Glitch Ronovich. So stay tuned, because the main message of this show is, if you want to make sense out of this program, you've got to give it your undivided attention. So a bunch of the guys and I came into possession of an old cement truck, and we got the idea that we could turn it into a planetarium on wheels, which was a great idea at the time. I mean, you'd sit inside, and the drum would spin around you. So we ended up duct taping a bunch of Christmas lights to the inside there in random patterns, which was a lot of work because we usually just leave them up till late August. So we turned the unit on, and Logan, the first one in, started being thrown into the size and getting tangled up in all the lights. I tell you, he's extremely anxious to get out, even more than he was to be the first one in. And to be honest, we probably would have been able to get him out a lot quicker if we hadn't all been laughing so hard. But by the time we stopped her, he was definitely seeing stars. So we opened up the top hatch to look down inside there. That's when it occurred to us. What we had was the body of a gigantic telescope on wheels. Which would be great, because it let us look at all the stars, the rings of Saturn, and even right at Uranus. It's time for Teen Talk the part of the show which is aimed at talking to you teenagers. Now, I want to talk to you teenagers because I know your parents are after you again to clean up your room. They're in your face, as you would put it. Because that pile of laundry, junk food wrappers, and comic books in the center of your room just developed a heartbeat. Or maybe a pair of your gym socks got together and had pups. Your dad, of course, is warning you that That room proves you're headed for a life of total failure. And you're thinking, he would know. But hey, instead of arguing with your parents, I'll thank them. It's a lot easier. Tell them the hottest field in science today is your chaos theory. And you're on your way to a PhD. Now those aren't dust bunnies under the bed. Those are your prototypes of fuzzy logic and scuzzy drives. A smile coming out of the closet? Why, that's your alternative fuel project. You're going to save the ozone layer. Maybe not the Earth's ozone layer, but at least the part over the laundry hamper. And the new antibiotics, they all come from mold. So you're not a pig. You're a creative genius. I ought to know. I'm a regular Einstein myself. It's that time of the show again, in which we delve into the middle age mentality in honor of WMCO celebrating its 50th year of being on the air. This is Midlife Mancers. You know, I heard recently that scientists are looking for house designs that would work well on Mars. The idea is that we're going to live on Mars soon because Earth is getting overpopulated. I beg to differ. Places like New York and Toronto may be overpopulated, but have you been to Alaska recently? We have lots of room left right here on Earth. It's just that most of our available space doesn't have perfect weather or soil and isn't close to a major highway or even an indoor mall. But then neither is Mars. And it's one heck of a commute. So maybe one day some of us will live on Mars, but... Before then, I'd take a hard look at rooming with a penguin in Antarctica first. Remember, it might not be smart or correct, but it's one of the things that makes us what we are. This has been Midlife Mancers, a part of Psychonauts, right here on WMCO. This is that part of the show in which I ask you to let me count the ways. Now, for anyone who enjoys science fiction, loves adventure, or believes there has to be some other intelligent life form in the universe, besides you, of course, there's something appealing about having your very own UFO sighting. It's not impossible, but it's also not easy. So if you're wondering if it could happen to you, 
Here's a short list of things you'll have to do to allow yourself to become one of the chosen few. When watching for UFOs, always remove your glasses. Always watch for UFOs alone. Very rarely do two people encounter the object at the same time, which only proves the aliens are so clever they only reveal themselves to us one at a time. Exercise your imagination. Try squinting at things to make them look more interesting, sort of like you do in the mirror. Use your diet. Many UFO sightings have occurred after a night of spicy food. And always do your UFO sightings near airports. It's the mailbag part of the program in which I respond to listener mail. Today's listener writes, Dear Manic, Sometimes I stand alone on the top of a hill at night and stare up at the stars for hours and hours, marveling at their beauty and complexity. And suddenly, I burst into tears and throw up. And I wonder, are we alone in the universe? <laughs> well, listener, I'm not, but it sounds like you are. All the time, every week, it seems like there's some article about people who claim to have seen, been abducted, or are even married to an alien, three kids and a fourth on the way. And you know what? Claims are always being made by the same type of people. Like what? It gets to the point that if you spend any time in a trailer park, you're bound to hear something about a UFO. You know, granted, it could just be the neighbors telling you what they think of you. So we ended up building our telescope truck using parts from a Mercury Comet, Ford Galaxy, and even a Saturn, you know, to kind of give it that outer spacey feel. Even put a little sticker on there. Planets in Mir may be closer than they appear. So we took our telescope truck out and we all decided that the most exciting thing we wanted to see was a UFO, mainly because none of us knew where anything else was. Sitting there, we eventually saw this huge thing kind of go through the air. We thought at first it was Dakota on a dirt bike reenacting that scene in E.T. with the alien monkey and the kid jumping over the moon. But you know what, this thing seemed to have some intelligence to it. It came down to treetop level and hovered there for a little bit. Then it, then it took off like a uh, trillion miles an hour. And it came screeching back down, without the screech of course. It was, it was kind of just like it was out of that movie, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Except it was smaller and didn't have that great song. It landed in the woods behind the station, so we went right over there and we also took a gift. We showed them how to drink. They repaid us by letting them join them on a trip that would orbit the universe. In this part of the show called Truth or Consequences, I'm going to show you how to make up the truth so you won't have to face the consequences. So you just pulled in your driveway and it's late and you didn't tell anyone you were going to be late. You're not going to be able to sneak into the house, and you know the very first thing you're going to hear as soon as you go through that front door is, why didn't you call? You're going to need an answer, and you're going to need the truth. And the truth is, you don't have an answer. So the truth becomes, you're going to have to make something up. So here's some answers you can use when you need them. So you can try, I'm sorry I didn't call, honey, but... I gave all my money to a homeless family who were forced to live in a dumpster and I didn't have the heart to ask him for chance to use the phone. Or you could say, the police came in and they said they were tracking reports of aliens in the area which are apparently pure energy. Some, anyway, they said no one can use the phones. Or I guess you could just say, I'm sorry honey, I didn't call. It was thoughtless of me. I feel really bad. I love you very much. Please forgive me. But we'll try the other two first. It's that time of the show again in which we delve into the middle age mentality in honor of WMCO celebrating its 50th year of being on the air. This is Midlife Mancers. Lost my car keys last week. 
Uh, I don't mean misplaced. I mean lost. Lost, lost. Like, you know in those movies where teenagers find a door into another dimension, and they throw a nerdy kid in, and he never comes out again? Something like that. Then yesterday, I go looking for the TV remote, and it's gone. Again, now, I'm not talking stuck in between the couch cushions gone. I mean vaporized. Naturally, I started to wonder what this was about. And I talked to Ernie, and he said, Been there, lost that. Well, I thought about all this stuff, and eventually, I had no choice but to accept the simple yet troubling truth. You've probably already guessed what it is. Aliens. Sometime after you pass the age of 20, and for no good reason other than pure spite, aliens start breaking into your house and doing stuff to make you think you're going nuts. Like that cup of coffee on the counter that magically drank itself, or the cap to the gas tank that came off on the highway even though you screwed it on tight, or the lights that went off in spite of the fact that you almost quite definitely paid the electric bill. Good news is, I came up with a solution to teach the aliens who's boss. Bad news is, I wrote it down. Now I can't find it. And I think we all know who's to blame for that. Remember, it might not be smart or correct, but it's one of the things that makes us what we are. This has been Midlife Mancers, a part of Psychonauts, right here on WMCO. So as I said last time, we met the aliens and they took us on a trip that would order the universe, so we stayed and partied with them for a bit. Then they dropped us off and started to leave. So we followed them through the forest right up to the main highway there, and just as we got close to them again, they sort of shimmered out of existence. And the spaceship just kind of rose silently into the night sky. And that's how we ended up in the middle of the highway, blocking every lane with a cement truck and had Christmas lights and car parts duct taped to it. <laughs> 